All right, here's what you're gonna see at the end of this video, which is a detailed engine compartment. I'm warning you, this video is like an hour long. I've spent the last two days doing a full service on the 84 300SD. Uh, I also did new wheel bearings, new rotors, new calipers, new brake hoses, power steering flush, transmission flush, bled the brake system, valve adjustment, valve cover gasket, Went through a lot of stuff, and it's like an hour long, so this covers a lot of detail, so sit back and enjoy. Thanks. All right, guys, we're back out in the shop, and today we're working on the beautiful 63,000-mile 1984 300ST. And the tires, despite looking like they're in outstanding condition, they still have the little, here, let me turn the light on. They still have the little knobbies on there. Um, these tires are from 2009. They're Michelins, and Michelins aren't actually made for these cars anymore. So today we're going to go ahead and take these wheels to the tire shop and get some fresh rubber put on here. And I'm also going to use that as an opportunity to inspect all the suspension. With 63,000 miles, I mean, there's going to be nothing wrong with it. These cars don't need suspension overhauls until way later down the road. Um, so I'm expecting all that to look good, but we're going to go through it, inspect everything, make sure it's all right, and then we'll get some new rubber put on here. Let's see what we got. This is the driver's side. All right. I'm going to throw some new wheel bearings in here. Um, I'll pop the cap off and pop the hub off, um, put some new wheel bearings in here. Uh, brakes have pad life left. Rotors don't have a lip. The rotors are still good. Oh man, those are super thick. Rotors are in great shape. Let's go around here. Ball joints, great shape. Oh man, yeah, the tie rods are in great shape. With 63,000 miles, it doesn't need a uh, suspension overhaul. Boots are not ripped bushings oh yeah those bushings are in great shape let's check these down here yeah those are those are outstanding there's absolutely no reason to touch any of that so yeah let's go ahead and uh we'll get this caliper off and pop the hub off and i do want to repack and re-grease the wheel bearings i also want to inspect them i think i'm just going to throw some brand new wheel bearings in there all right, we're just on the passenger side uh, inspecting the rotors, rotor, no scoring uh, or uh, grooves. That rotor's in good shape. That caliper looks fantastic. Um, let's check the ball joint. Yeah, ball joint over here is fantastic condition. Uh, boot doesn't even have a crack in it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Tie rods are in excellent shape. Let me go ahead and inspect the center link. <clears throat> yeah, center link is in great shape. Shock bushings are in great shape. Yeah, this stuff is all, this is all good in here. There's no reason to replace all of that. Let's check the, oh, yeah. See, those bushings are perfect. Yeah, with 63,000 miles, this stuff has not had time to, to wear out. And the German rubber from back in the day was just so damn good. Let's check that upper. Yeah, those are excellent condition. Yeah, excellent condition. Okay, I'm just on the rear of the car now, uh, checking out the rear rotors. Outstanding condition, plenty thick. There's no lip, rear calipers. Oh man, those pads are super thick in there. Those are solid. These lines, these lines have been replaced. Uh, previous owner has already replaced those. Sometimes uh, on the originals you'll get cracking, so you need to replace those hoses. But these are solid. Oh yeah. This is uh, fantastic. Caliper still got the Mercedes sticker on it. Look at that. Yeah, these are good. Uh, there's no leaking around the diff 
And of course, we're going to service this and change the diff fluid, transmission fluid, all that stuff. Uh, these boots, excellent condition. No cracking or tears in the boots. Yeah, I mean, this is what you would expect to see on a 63,000-mile 60, car. Um, all this stuff is in great condition back here. Again, those, yeah, those brake lines have been changed. There's no cracking, nothing on there. Excellent condition. Even the rear sway bar links are solid. Those are great. Bump stops are still intact up here. Let's check this sway bar in link. Oh yeah, those are still stiff. So, all right, we're back from the tire shop. I have the new uh, tires mounted to the wheels. I just have them outside in the enclosed trailer. And hopefully you guys can hear me today because I have the uh, heater running in the garage and it's kind of loud. It's a kerosene heater. All right, first thing we need to do is get this caliper off of here. Get the impact up here. All right, guys, next thing we want to do is pull off this caliper. There we go. That'll keep our any pressure off the ABS lines, uh, ABS or uh, brake hose. Next thing we need to do is pop the dust shield off so we can remove our... Uh, nut that holds on the uh, rotor or the spindle and I just tap it with a uh, hammer and just a little bit on each side and it comes off and underneath there we have so this is a little copper piece I'm going to put another one in there because that one's broken uh, that touches the uh, cap and it's like for radio interference but then we're going to take our spindle uh, nut off here and we can slide this whole rotor and hub off of the spindle. I want to say a number five. Yeah. And this is, that's some old grease, so I need to put some new bearings in here and definitely repack the new bearings and put some new seals. See, there's some of the grease right there. That looks like some of the original grease. Tap this. There we go. Put that over there. All right, I put my thumbs on the end of it. There we go. So that bearing, this outer bearing doesn't come flying out. See, this outer bearing, there's not a seal. But if you look on the back, there's the, uh, we're gonna replace this seal. There's the original seal. So we're gonna pop these bearings and seals out and take care of that job. All right, guys, the next thing I wanna do is remove these hubs from the rotors. There's some Allen bolts. There's five of them that hold it on there. And uh, I wanna remove these, separate them, so I can work on the hub by itself without having the rotor in the way. Also, I wanna clean up the hub and the parts washer and uh, check the bearing races, and then uh, respray the hub. It's factory black color. All right, there we go. Here's the hub. And just upon initial inspection of the of the bearing races I can see the race where the bearing rides is that's still in outstanding condition and we want to pull this seal out of the back so we can remove the rear bearing this is the front bearing first I want to clean these up in the parts washer and then uh, I'll tap the edges of this uh, bearing seal in and then use the seal puller to pull that out of there and the parts washer in order to make it easier to get this seal out you want to take a chisel and just go around the edges and press it in a little bit Go. We got our uh, old 
good seal out of there. Then we get that old bearing out of there. And we're going to take this back to the parts washer and clean it up really good. Alright, we got everything cleaned up in the uh, parts washer and uh, got the FAG wheel bearing set. And uh, sometimes I, I use the center uh, uh, grease caps from the set, but a lot of times the originals uh, will work better. Here's the new bearings and uh, some seals. The seals go around the bearing in the back. So I got a pack of these bearings. Here we go, it goes like that. Uh, so first I have to uh, pack these bearings, get some uh, grease down in there, and then put them into the uh, hubs. All right, I like to respray using the Dupa Color Semi Gloss. Respray the hubs because that's how they came from the factory. So we'll get a nice, nice coating on those to make them uh, factory original again. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to pack one of these wheel bearings. You just want to get some good quality uh, wheel bearing grease. Timken, they make bearings, so their wheel bearing grease is very good. And you want to glob a lot of it into the palm of your hand. And the goal is to get the grease up into the bearings. So I start by just running it around there. See as I rotate, I pack it down in there. And by the time I'm done, you're gonna see the grease is no longer on my hand. And there we go, so we have all the grease packed up in the bearings and it squirted out along the sides and we packed it from this side and that's how you pack a wheel bearing. All right, so here are the hubs and they're still wet from where I just painted them but I put a little coating of grease around the inside of the hub and then we just want to drop in the bearing that we just packed. They only go one way, so you can't mess it up. And here's the other one. And then I wanna knock in the rear bearing seal. Here's the bearing seal. You just wanna place it right on there. And then you get a two by four and you bang it with a mallet. All right, you stick that 2x4 on there, like that, and there you go, that seal is in there. And there you go. There we go. Now let's flip them over. And we'll get some of that grease we put in there and just wipe it around the race. And we'll drop in our outer bearing. There we go. And there we go, guys. New bearings, new seals, painted hubs. Let's get those back on the car. All right, guys, despite the original rotors and calipers looking good when I did my initial inspection, I actually was inspecting the uh, driver's side caliper and it appeared to be dragging a little bit. See how this spins freely? But over here on this side, this does not spin freely. And I think this caliper is dragging. So I don't want to mess with leaving that stuff on there. So I went ahead and picked up some nice Zimmerman rotors and some ATE calipers. And I'm going to go ahead and 
replace the front rotors and front calipers. Pretty easy to install. The, the bolt holes only line up one way. You do need to make sure that you put on some blue Loctite on the bolts uh, before you put them back in. And the bolts can only go in one way too. So Mercedes designed this where you can't, uh, you can't mess it up. There's two sets of bolt holes in here on the 300 SD calipers or the 126 calipers. These, these bolts only go into one set of the holes. Press them on until you feel the seal go around the inner part of the spindle. Now these need to go, they don't need to be cranked down. You basically run them down until you get rid of the play or the slot in the hub assembly. All right, see there's play in it. You just want to snug them up till you get rid of that play. Almost. All right, back it off a little. There we go, guys. That's perfect. Then you want to tighten down your set screw or lock nut here so it holds it on there. And there we go. Perfect. See, it's got a little play. There we go. Perfect. All right, guys, let's throw those calipers on here. I've got some ATE calipers installed, and those were original equipment and new rotors. And since I had the old caliper off, I went ahead and changed the front line because despite the rears already being changed, the fronts uh, still looked original. And despite them not having any cracks and being in good condition, uh, I went ahead and changed those because you have to unhook it to get the caliper off anyway. So we got new brake line on the front, new caliper, new rotor. So let's go ahead and do the other side. All right, guys, we got some genuine Mercedes brake pads. And uh, let's go ahead and get these slipped on. We'll start with the driver's side. Now let's go ahead and we're going to reattach brake pad wear sensors and the back of the pads that uh, hold them in. The brake pad wear sensor just plugs into the back of the caliper with a 10 millimeter. Don't need to crank it down for any reason. Just snug it up there. And then you'll see, see this little hole? I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, it's right there above my finger. There's a little hole, and that's where the brake pad wear sensor plugs in to that hole. Channel on the on the uh, on the pad. There you go. And once that's in there, see this little pin has, see this is a compressible piece of metal. See it has a slit in it right there. So when you push it through here, the hole's not quite big enough for that to go through. So you tap it in with a little punch and that part compresses and it holds it in there. It holds the, uh, oops, sorry, I didn't put that over there. There we go and it holds that piece in place. And then we'll do this one right here. And for this one, I need to get this one pushed in here. So I'm gonna tap those through there with a little uh, punch. You can see it right there. You just have to tap that in And 
there you go. It stays in there now. You'll see the other side came through right here. The difference between ATE and Bendix are that Bendix uses on their pin, they actually have a hole in the end of it and they use a little cotter pin. There we go, there's a little hole and this cotter pin goes through it. So the cotter pin would be right there. Um, I like ATEs better because you just tap that in and out. You don't have to worry about that little cotter pin flying across the shop. See how it just goes right in there like that? Such a cool design. When you're putting the caliper bolts back in, you always want to do a little blue Loctite and then torque them down. Then you want to put your torque wrench on there. Make sure they're torqued correct. And the last part is to reinsert our little radio interference uh, tab on the end of the spindle. And then we'll tap back on the grease dust covers. I like to use the originals. The ones that come in the kits never really fit right. Hit this with some brake cleaner and get any grease we may have on here. And there we have it. Some nice new rotors, calipers, and brake hoses. Man, those new brakes look great under there. So glad I did that. Here's the new tires. I chose to go with the uh, hand cook. I've had good success with these. You can't get Michelins anymore, and uh, these are nice tires. I like them. Also went with the 205-70 R14, so they're a little wider, and uh, that'll give a little bit better ride quality. So let's get these thrown up on the car. Despite this vehicle being well maintained, it's always a good idea to change all the fluids. So we're going to go ahead and start on the diff fluid. Got our catch can there. And you always want to break, break loose the, the fill plug first. Because if you can't get that open, you don't want to drain it. There we go. We got our fill plug out. Let's go ahead and take that guy out. It's going to take your drain plug out. And it was definitely full. So I bet you they did a service on this not too long ago. Yeah, that looks super clean. Guys, that diff fluid is brand new. We are not changing that. That is brand new. I'm putting that plug back in. Yep, that has definitely been changed. Guys, there's no reason to drain that. that fluid is brand new. You can tell from looking at it. Well, I need to go check the transmission. They had it. He said he had it serviced shortly right before I bought it. And I guess he had a full service. I'll check the transmission fluid. Let's wipe that off. And let's get the car back on the ground and we're gonna check that transmission fluid. Just while I was back here, I checked the exhaust hangers. I was just trying to find something that needed servicing and that's a new exhaust hanger. Uh, that one is, it's got a little bitty crack there but it's in excellent condition. Uh, those are new exhaust hangers. So, guys, I can't find anything to service on the rear of this vehicle. Let's check that transmission fluid. All right, so our diff service did not need to be done. Let's check this transmission fluid. Oh, yeah, we're going to do a transmission service. It is, uh, it's bright red when it's brand new, and that's got a brown tint to it. So we need to go ahead. We're going to flush the transmission and put in 
a new transmission filter. So we'll get it back up in the air and do that right now. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and check the oil. Yeah, the oil's brand new. So he did, in fact, he told me he had an oil change. That's interesting why he would have an oil change in a diff service, but not the transmission service. Um, probably because the diff and uh, a diff and oil service are easy. Um, transmission is a little tougher. You got to drop the pan, put a new filter in there, change the gasket, get it filled up, run it, get the engine hot and transmission hot, then top it off. So I bet you that's uh, why they didn't do the transmission service. Who knows? But obviously there's fresh oil and uh, fresh diff fluid. Let's check the power steering fluid. Man, that's on there. Ugh. I bet you that was so tight because they did that service. All right, let's check. Whoops. Okay, that's a little brown. Should be red, so we're going to do a power steering. There we go. Yeah, we're going to do a uh, power steering fluid flush. That brake fluid is fresh. So they did a... Uh, here, let's hold a light behind it so you can see it. Yeah, that is brand new brake fluid. You can't even see it, it's so clear. So they obviously did a brake fluid flush, but they did not do power steering or transmission. So we'll go ahead and get it back up on the lift and knock that out. All right, so I've drained the power steering fluid. You can see we're looking down at the bottom of the reservoir there. Uh, but I pulled out the nasty old uh, filter, and we're going to drop in a fresh, brand new filter. So let's go ahead and stick this guy down in there. There we go. And we need to get this refilled, and I'm going to have to bleed the system. You have to turn the wheels back and forth from lock to lock to get all the bubbles out of there. But we need to get this refilled with some fresh ATF Dexron 3 fluid. All right, so let's pour some of this in here. You can already start to hear the bubbles come out of there. You saw the power steering fluid before. That's what it's supposed to look like. We couldn't even see that filter before. So this is fresh, so I gotta turn the wheels, suck that down into there, refill it, turn the wheels, suck it down in there, refill it again, and then I gotta turn the wheels back and forth and it'll purge all the bubbles, air bubbles out of the system. So that'll take a minute. Okay, and magically we're back with a purged system. <laughs> and there we go, one more thing off the checklist. There is a little inspection hole right here. Now, when you change the transmission fluid, of course you uh, drain the pan, then you drop the pan and you put in a new filter and then a new pan gasket. But you also, uh, that's the torque converter. And you have to rotate the engine until you see a little Allen plug appear there. See, I've got a socket on the front of the engine. And when it appears there, um, you can stop and you remove that plug and you have to drain the torque converter or else you're not getting all that old transmission fluid out of here. Uh, let's see what that did. All right. There's that little Allen right there. So let's go ahead and get that out of there. Oh yeah, that fluid definitely needs to be changed. That diff fluid looked brand new, but you can see, you can see how that is a brown, has a brown tinge to it. So we're gonna put in some nice fresh fluid. Um, this is the little Allen plug for the torque converter. There we go. Now, I just got to crack loose. I'll wait till this drains before I uh, before I pull that one all the way out. In the meantime, 
we have a original Mercedes gasket. There's a transmission pan gasket. And here is a Mercedes transmission filter. Got to use the good stuff. That's it. So we'll get these guys in there as soon as we get this drain and get uh, the pan off. All right, since we're dropping the pan, we've got it empty enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the plug back in there. And now when you pull out the torque converter bolt, uh, Allen plug, um, it drains all over the cross member, but it just drains around it and into the pan. So not a big deal. But uh, let's raise this pan a little bit. But it's crucial to take this one out. Otherwise, you're not really doing a transmission flush because you're leaving dirty oil in there. It's draining good now, but you can see up there, there's the torque converter. Very important that you drain that. Lots of fluid comes out of that. So we'll let that finish, then get this pan off. All right, I got tired of waiting. So I've just got another pan on the ground and we're gonna go ahead and drop this pan here. I've got an uh, oil catch, can, catch pan on the ground. Or not. All right, let's give it a little tap. There it goes. And we'll get that pan down. There we go. We're going to let all that drip into the pan on the ground. And you can see that transmission fluid is brown. Um, if that was fresh, it would be bright red, but it's like a golden brown. So perfect time to uh, change. Here's the filter right here. It's three bolts to take the filter out. And uh, then we'll clean up the pan and change the gasket. So let's just let that drain for a second. Here's what we got in the pan here. And the pan's clean, it's just brown. There we go. So we'll take this pan over to the parts washer and uh, that's good, there's nothing in the pan. Pan's clean as a whistle. Um, so we'll take it to the parts washer, clean this up, then we'll throw the a new gasket on here. Sometimes the old gaskets are tricky to, oh, this one came right off. Sometimes they're stuck on there. So let's pull this old gasket off and let's go to the parts washer with this guy. All right, the pan's over at the parts washer. Let's go ahead and get this filter off of here. And then we'll take a look at the filter. All right, get that old fluid out of there. All right, here we are at the parts washer. We can see we got a golden brown transmission fluid and the filter, uh, you can see the filter and the, the paper elements in there. And then here's some nice fresh new paper elements in the new Mercedes filter. So we'll throw that one away, pop this one on, and let's put this in the parts washer and get it super clean. And we're just doing a inspection up in here. Let me turn on the light. Looks very good. It's very clean. Uh, look at that. That torque converter is still draining. That thing takes a long time. So while that's still draining, we're going to throw this new filter up there. And you'll notice we have an inlet and an outlet for the filter. See there and there? And those match up with a little cork gasket there and a cork gasket there. So when you mount this up there, you got to make sure those little cork gaskets uh, line up and, and press up in there so it seals. Now, if you've noticed, I have not wiped down this transmission. You don't want to wipe it down because you don't want any foreign contaminants in there. Right now it's clean. Um, the pan has been on there. It was sealed and that's, that's clean. There's nothing in there. So don't wipe that down. Just let it stay wet and, uh, and then put the new pan and gasket up there. And you can feel when you get them to uh, 
where you get those little holes to line up with the cork gaskets. So let's go ahead and get one screw started. So we're gonna get this one up there. There we go. Now it's aluminum, so you don't want to crank these down. That's an aluminum housing that's going into. So you just snug them up. All right, let's check my work. All right, yep, I can see the cork gasket is properly sealed over here. And it's properly sealed back there. Good. All right, so let's go clean up this uh, pan. we want to wipe down the inside with a fresh microfiber with nothing on it. You don't want any contaminants in there. That is a clean pan. Now let's get the gasket and put it on there. I get all my stuff from RBM of Atlanta. They're uh, good dudes over there in the parts department. All right, so you notice the gasket. I've covered this in other videos. It has a tab right here and right here. And those tabs click on to the side of the pan. Let's get this on here. You see that tab? Press the gasket on and that clips over the side and it holds it in place. Right there, see that? Holds the gasket in place. All right, that gasket's on there. Let's put this super clean pan and get some fresh fluid in there. All right, here's the deal with this pan, guys. Um, these bolts only take about 10 foot-pounds. You do not want to crank them down or it will bend the little tabs. Um, it doesn't take much torque at all. And then we'll do the rest in by hand and then torque them down for to about 10 foot pounds. That's it. You do not want to torque these down and bend your pan. Very easy car to work on. The engineers at Mercedes just made everything so, uh, everything just makes sense. Everything's in the right spot and everything just makes sense and it all just works together correctly. Some cars you got to, take them half apart to do any work on them. Not on these old cars. Best cars ever made. Now as far as torquing them down, see I just hold it. I don't hold it by the handle here. I hold it right here. And you go to about 10 foot pounds, guys, that's it. And the gasket does all the work, not your bolt torque. And that's it. That pan is on there. Now we need to make sure our drain plug is tight. And the drain plug has a crush washer that goes underneath it. There you go. 
drain plug is in there. Had to get the crush washer, uh, new crush washer that goes on the little drain plug here. There we go. That is in there. Now I'm gonna hit that with some brake cleaner. There we go. Now I'm just gonna wipe that down with a rag. Remember, it's all over that cross member, so we just want to wipe all that off. That's why I hit it with brake cleaner. guys we are ready to put some fresh fluid in here there's the fresh new pan all cleaned up with our new gasket filter and torque converter drain now let's go up top and fill it up with fluid before we fill it up let's go ahead and while we're under here drain the oil and get uh get some fresh oil in there even though they did service it um, I'm just going to go ahead and knock it out while I'm under here. Yeah, that oil was in, in good shape, but I want a new filter, new oil, new transmission filter, power steering fluid. I want all of it fresh. All right, we're back up top, and it's obvious when they had it serviced, they put some uh, brand new uh, diesel return lines on here. Those are Mercedes brand, and they're brand new, and they're correctly routed. So I'm going to go ahead and get the oil filter cap off, put a new filter in there, and uh, we'll go ahead and get some transmission fluid back in there. And then tomorrow, I'm going to uh, pop up all of these linkages, do a valve adjustment, and uh, lubricate all the little ball and socket linkages on the engine. And let's go ahead and lubricate our new gasket. And the new gasket on. And our new filter. Now, guys, these, uh, I've pointed this out in my other videos. These are studs pressed into the aluminum housing of the oil filter. They're just pressed in. So if you go cranking these nuts down there, um, you're going to pull those studs out and ruin your oil filter housing. These don't have to be cranked down. You only torque them on there. You only torque them on there like 10 foot-pounds, 12 foot-pounds. Uh, there's no reason to go ruining your oil filter housing by cranking those guys down there. I like to use Rotella 15W40 and everything. 
I'm down here in the south. If you're up north and it's winter time, maybe a 5W40. I've heard guys using a 5W40 synthetic. But uh, in the Mercedes manual, it says 15W40 all season, all year round. So you're good with this. Uh, and, unless, you know, I guess it's like 20 below or zero degrees all the time. Anyway, we're going to get this topped off, then do the transmission fluid. All right, guys, for the transmission fluid, you want a Dexron 3. Recommended for Dexron 3. That's what these guys used. They also use this in the uh, uh, power steering reservoir. So it's going to take this whole jug and then a, I think it takes six or seven quarts. But uh, then you got to get everything up to temp in order to measure it. So I'll put in like five or six, crank it, get it up to temp, and then start adding until we show it on the dipstick. And then you need to drive around, get, thing, get the engine up to temperature, the transmission up to temperature. I usually drive it down the street and carry a quart or, uh, with me. And then once it gets up to temp, I'll pull over, check it, and add. And then pull over, check it, and add until I get it to the right level. You gotta have a running engine to check the transmission fluid. Get that in there. See how red that is compared to what was in there? That's what you want. And it'll it'll stay that red, you know, 30,000 miles. I like to change mine every 30,000 miles or so. And it'll be that same red. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. We'll finish this process tomorrow. And sorry, I'm sniffling, it's cold out here. And then we'll detail the engine compartment, hit it with some degreaser, uh, do a valve adjustment, lubricate the throttle linkage, and take it out for a test drive. See you guys tomorrow, which will probably appear to be in five seconds for you guys. All right, hey everybody, it's the next day, and I've been out in the shop for a couple of hours, uh, probably four hours, and... Um, I went ahead, popped all the linkages off this morning, did a valve adjustment, uh, got the engine up to temp, uh, did, did a new uh, valve cover gasket, lubricated the throttle linkage, got the car up to temp and took it around the block, uh, got the uh, transmission up to temp, then I topped off the transmission fluid, and then I detailed the engine compartment, and uh, that completes the service on this vehicle. Runs great. Um, I want you guys to see this. Look at this uh, engine compartment. It It's beautiful. 63,000 miles. The cadmium plating is super vibrant. Everything looks really good on here. Let's see if I turn out the light, if it makes a difference. That looks really good. Uh, hit some degreaser down here to remove any grease from the front of the engine. You know, these diesels can get pretty greasy. And I got it really nice. And uh, this engine runs good. I'll do the walk around and test drive videos uh, later. And of course, there's the new hood pad you guys see me put on there. So I am done with the service on this vehicle. Uh, out on the test drive, there are uh, there's another uh, thing that I found I wanted to work on. Let me show you. Uh, I want to disassemble the driver's seat control switch and uh, spray some deox in there and get those switches working smoothly. They work now, but they're a little they're a little uh, sticky. See, it's just a little sticky it should come back quicker so i'm going to disassemble this so i want to remove these uh buttons or switches and lubricate them and clean them up with deox this stuff does it works wonders on electronic switches and buttons but to get those off i use these are like from a computer an old school computer repair kit these are for actually clipping on and removing microchips from a, a motherboard but they work perfect on these little buttons. You just get behind there and you just pull it straight off. I'll drop that guy there. 
and same goes for this one if i pull this out a little bit i can get behind the switch there we go with a little tool and then you just pull straight out and it pulls them off there just straight without hurting anything now as far as the deox you literally can spray this in any electronic circuit and it won't hurt anything so we're going to spray it in there and then move everything Wow, that already made a huge difference. Holy cow, it only took that much. These were sticking. So you put it in there, and you just, you work everything back and forth. And this one goes forward, forward and backward. Oh, much better. Wow. I thought I was going to have to disassemble that, but I think that just did it. All right, let's go ahead and wipe that off and reassemble. Reassemble our switch or our buttons, whatever you want to call it. Uh, here's the seat back. That one goes right in there, like so. You just snap back on. And those two line up here. And just pushes right back on. Oh, look at that. Perfect. That was sticking before. So first we'll do up and down. Perfect. And then the seat back, you can see that moving. Fantastic. So that was super easy. All it needed was uh, a couple of squirts of Deox. That and uh, clean it all up. Let's fire this thing up so you guys can see it. All right, we got glow plugs. There we go. This engine, first thing I noticed is how still the engine is. Sometimes they bounce around a little bit more. And this one is very still. And you see the throttle linkage is all nice and lubricated. Moves really easy, very smoothly. And I forgot to show the uh, new tires on the GAR. Those look nice. Anyway, this was a long video. I did uh, the service on uh, the car it takes a little while. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned. Uh, coming soon is the walk around and driving video. Anyway, subscribe, hit the bell notification. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.